Hey friends, welcome back to another Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane. Hey Lane. Hello. So friends, we're so glad you're back here today with us. We just love, um, Lane does a great job of collecting your questions and what y'all are interested in hearing. And Lane, what are we going to talk about today? Well, back in episode 78, which was our Grow Light Frequently Asked Questions, Lisa, you mentioned your germination chamber, and that had a lot of people wondering, what's a germination chamber? Do I need one? What seeds go in there? Why would someone want one? So we're just going to go through what a germination chamber is and give you an overview of some of those facts so you can see if it's something you might want to incorporate into your seed starting setup. Okay, great. Okay, Lisa, so for anyone that doesn't know, a germination chamber is a pretty dreamy spot for seeds. It's like a seed spa. So what is a germination chamber, Lisa, and why might someone want one? Sure, so for easy explaining, a germination chamber is basically a sauna. Um, As you already mentioned, it's like a spa. It's a steam bath. Um, And what um, why you would want one is as you become a grower and grow, want to grow more and more and more, which means you have to start more and more seeds all at the same time. Um, a germination chamber allows you to start a lot more seeds um, in the same space. So the, the image that we're looking at, remember, if you're listening on podcast, you can go over to our YouTube channel and have a look at this. The germination chamber image on the left side is basically a stainless steel rolling rack that we have built into a germination chamber with insulation board. Um, And in a two by four foot spot, eight square feet, we could support, how many shelves is that lane? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow. So we can put nine tray, nine shelves with three trays on each shelf with each tray holding 250 or 240 seedlings, you can see that you can start a lot of trays at one time. You would need a really, 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 really long heat mat to actually do that on a seedling heat mat. So it basically delivers the same end product. It just goes about it in a little bit different way. Um, So who might want one is an aspiring flower farmer that has outgrown their commercial um, heat mats. I still use heat mats on occasion for different things, but this is definitely a step up. This is not what someone would start with. This is the next step. So different chambers may work differently, but for yours, Lisa, it's an enclosed chamber with lots of shelves. There's a basin of water with a heating element, and there's also a thermostat. So it creates a nice cozy environment with really consistent humidity and temperature that's just perfect for germinating seeds. Yes. And it's not something that most home gardeners typically have. You obviously could if you wanted, but it's more common amongst commercial growers. And it's just something that helps, like Lisa said, if you're constantly running short on heat mat space. So how many heat mats do you think you would need to accommodate the same amount of trays that you can fit in your germination chamber, Lisa? That would be three times nine is 27 trays. So that means you'd need at least 52 feet of heat mat to accommodate that same number of trays. So yes, it's, it's definitely for the commercial, um, the person producing a lot of seedlings. Yeah. And it does have some other benefits as well. You don't have to use burlap or anything to cover the seeds when they go in a germination chamber. And then it also has reduced labor in terms of watering these trays. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So you do not water, at least I don't have to water the trays. When I open the doors in the morning, it's closed up fairly tightly. I mean, it's like a sauna. There's moisture everywhere. And um, that's what helps the seeds to just pop so much quicker. They get really well hydrated. um, And then you um, take them out when they're 50% or more like you would off of a heat mat and move them to grow lights. So yeah, it is definitely a time saver. And you just mentioned seeds tend to germinate a little faster. Are there any other differences you've noticed? Um, They definitely happen more uniformly because the environment is a little bit more stable, I think, in there than in the grow room. but a germination chamber is a pretty big deal to create. Um, and so, you know, for us, we like there are some things we have found that zinnias, for instance, 
Um, I'll put them in the germination chamber for 24 hours to warm them and moisten them. And then I move them out onto my grow mats, onto the heat mats. And they pop really quickly that way. Sometimes if they stay in the germination chamber and it's a color that takes longer, perhaps they risk rotting just because of the nature of that seed. Um, so you just have to find for your setup what works best. So you are saving time on, like we mentioned, the watering, but there are other tasks that you kind of have to make sure to check on with this daily. One of them, which you may or may not need to do depending on how your chamber is set up, is checking on your water level. And the other is checking to see which trays need to be moved out of the chamber and under grow lights. So just like we always talk about moving your trays off the heat mat and under grow lights, once around 50% of the seeds are showing signs of sprouting, it's especially important to check on your trays in a germination chamber because at least in your chamber, Lisa, there is no light. You know, in this image you're showing on the right that has, I mean, that would have been, I just opened the germination chamber doors for the first time that day. And that is the best surprise you could ever want to see. And that yeah. is, I believe, all amaranth. Amaranth and celosia is what that looks like. And so those would all be being moved out of the germination chamber to grow lights at that stage. Um, so that happened fairly quickly. And um, yeah, that's a dream. That's a dream right there. It is. And how often do you have to check your water basin and what can happen if you allow that to get a little too low? Sure. So there are so many different ways to build a germination chamber, and that is definitely built on your holding tank of water. I mean, you fill it up. I have to fill mine every single morning. It has a heating element in it. And if it goes below the heating element, it burns it up instantly. And I have burnt up more than my share. Um, so you learn. I know that when the chamber, the chamber just went on today, as a matter of fact, um, and Bobo puts a note on the door because that's the first job I do every single morning is open the doors, check the chamber, um, fill it with water, and then check all the trays and either just close it back up if nobody's ready to move on or move trays onto the grow lights. Um, but yeah, it's a really bad mistake to not keep water into your, um, your, your trough that's holding yeah. where your heating element is. And there are a lot of different ways to do it, but I will tell you that ours has a heating, a water heater element in it with a controlled thermostat and we get high heat quickly. Um, and that's what makes it so successful for us. Okay. Now we're going to move on to talking about which seeds work well in a germination chamber. And the first thing I want to address is the thing that was mentioned back in episode 78. And that was the fact that you actually sprout seeds that need to be surface sown. A lot of times their packs will say they need light to germinate. You very successfully sprout things like snapdragons and celosia in your germination chamber. Yes. And so what I have learned along this journey of seed starting so many seeds so many times over and over again, right, is that when they say sow it on the surface, it, surface, it needs light. That's more of a, I'm taking it as more of a descriptive method to sow the seed. But in fact, what that seed really needs is not necessarily light, it's oxygen. And that's why those seeds that they say needs light germinates beautifully in a germination chamber, which is pitch black inside, um, but they're surface sown. So what we're looking at there is that's amaranth um, dead on. And then to the left, I believe those are celosias. Um, so that warm, moist air just really hydrates those seeds really quickly and helps them to pop and move on. Yeah. And we've talked a lot of times about how surface sown seeds, they are so prone to drying out. And that's why a lot of people struggle with germination. So yeah. funnily enough, some of those seeds are the ones that can actually benefit the most from being put in the germination chamber. Yeah. And it's the bigger seeds that can still do okay, like, you know, zinnias and sunflowers and such. But those are the ones that, you know, if I have to make a choice, because I mean, believe it or not, we fill that germination chamber up quickly we'll put them onto seedling heats match, you know? So yeah, it, you just have to find, again, it depends on what your environment is. Maybe you're germinating stuff beautifully on a heat mat. And unless you need yeah. high volume, keep on doing a heat mat, you know? So are there any seeds that you would ever avoid putting into a germination chamber or will you put basically anything in there as long as you have room? So good question. There are some cool season hardy annuals. Um, so for the steam to be, 
created, you have to turn the thermostat up. I mean, usually ours is anywhere between 75 and 85 degrees. It just depends on what it is. Um, like sweet peas do not like it that warm. You know, we now germinate them outdoors, actually sitting on the carport. Um, so anything that's a real cool season germinator, which there aren't many of them. I think of sweet peas, Ami Magus, Daucus. Um, I might put Ami Magus and Daucus into the chamber, like I mentioned with the zinnias, for just 24 hours. That just hydrates. It really gets the seed really well wet, wetted and gives it allows it to be ready to just crack open when it's got its right temperatures. Then we'll take it out of the germ chamber and just set it in the room like I speak of doing so many of those cool season. I do that with dill, bupleurum, daucus. What else, Lane? Ami Majus. Ami, yeah. yeah. Um, so the four of them do really well in our experience to just hydrate them, then set them on a shelf somewhere. And the germination chamber will work for that also. Do you adjust your thermostat depending on if you're mostly starting cool season seeds in there or if you're mostly starting warm season? Do you adjust that thermostat? We almost 99% of the time are starting 100% of the same type of seed, the same family. So really, um, yes, the thermostat would be adjusted for warm, higher, 80 to 85, cool, lower, you know, actually 70 to 75, whatever it takes to get some steam going in there. We try to keep it as cool as possible for cool season, but while still, it, you know, initiating that process that we're looking for. And like we mentioned before, if you have anything that tends to be a really fast germinator, amaranth is a great example. Mm. Really keep your eye on it because those already tend to sprout very quickly when you have them on a heat mat or something. When they're in the germination chamber, I would imagine, Lisa, they're pretty quick to come up. In fact, um, funny you should say that, that amaranth, well, if you'll notice, the amaranth on the right and that celosia on the left, they were sown at the same time. And while certainly there's variation from family to family, celosias are pretty usually quick for us. Look how much taller that amaranth is already. Yeah. Um, some of the varieties, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it's hot biscuits. Literally, it's the only seed I have ever come back out and checked in the chamber 12 hours after it was sown. Because if it would have sat until the next morning when I normally check, they would have already been so stretched and tangled because they were looking for light. Um, so yeah, you just learn a lot of lesson. I now grow amazing amaranth seedlings because I've learned, I mean, you when you're doing amaranth, we check the chamber much more frequently. Yeah. And just move them under lights to avoid them getting exactly. leggy. Okay. Now we're just going to talk about where to get a germination chamber essentially. So can people purchase germination chambers pre-made and then yours is homemade, Lisa. Can you just give an overview of the general steps of how to make one yourself? You don't need to go into detail. People can find DIY plans online or in your flower farming school online. There's a detailed tutorial, but give an overview of how to make one and then just touch on if it can be purchased. Sure, it can be purchased. They're usually probably four to $9,000, depending on the size, because it's like a big old made container. Um, and we, you can make one yourself. And there are so many different ways to do it. Um, we built ours to be more of a high volume, um, quick germination chamber, which is kind of the whole purpose in a commercial world. And you can see that we took one of those stainless steel racks um, and then we have a stainless steel pan um, and we have a thermostat that's actually um, part of a greenhouse operation um, thermostat with a thermometer on it. Um, and then my sister and I used literally duct tape, cable ties, foam insulation board, and tried to create it as airtight as possible. And I mean, as I mentioned earlier, it has really lasted a long time and it does the job. Um, I would guess that we probably spent $200, $250 to build it if I had to do it today. Um, and, but it just, it just gave us so much more volume to be able to start so much more. It was pretty darn incredible. So the doors are closed on the left um, and you can see on the right with the doors open. Um, and it's a pretty basic, simple operation, but you have to have, it's got to be safe, you know, cause it has electricity inside there. So you have to have, you know, my husband's a plumber and hooks up water heaters all the time. So that worked out really well for me, but 
Um, you don't want to do something beyond your reach because you're talking water and electricity and it works really, really well. So you may need to employ some outside help for electrical work or maybe depending on what type you make, maybe even for plumbing. Right. And um, yeah, and some kits or um, instructions that we saw. And in fact, the one that we actually learned from, you could have a float control in your tank so you don't have to fill it every day. But then that would mean that it was had to be in a permanent location. And I will tell you that this germination chamber is on um, wheels and we have the ability to move it wherever in our building that when we're not doing, we're not using it. Sometimes we move it out of the way. Other times it's close to the grow room. And so that's, um, you know, there's a lot of variation on what you can do. But yeah, you might need outside help oftentimes. Um, And this is definitely an overkill for a home gardener, but, you know, to each his own. I've seen little mini germination chamber plans or DIYs. Um, And so, but it's a lot of work to go to if you're not starting seeds. We start seeds almost every week here from January to October, just about. So it's really useful and an effective tool for us to have on hand. And we love it. Okay. Well, that was it for this germination chamber episode. If anyone knows of an affordable germination chamber or just one that they would recommend that they have or any DIY plans that they'd like to share, go ahead and share those in the comment section over on YouTube, or you can use the form linked in the show notes. But thank you so much for listening or watching again. Be sure to subscribe or follow and also to share with a friend if you're enjoying Seed Talk. And we're just so thankful that you've joined us here again. So Lane, great show. I mean, I don't, don't y'all agree that she just really picks up on your questions and the comments. So your comments really count is what I'm they getting. Do. At. Yes. They really, really do. And um, so I appreciate that lane. And um, just remember here at the gardeners workshop.com, you can find resources, our online courses, and all of the tools, seeds, and supplies that you hear lane. And I mention from time to time um, are over there and you can learn more about them. So friends, Until we meet again, ciao. Bye.